that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to... Grant, make sure you play music here so I look cool when I do this outro. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is Card Bard by Key and Griffin Games. It plays two to four players, takes about 30 minutes to play, and is for ages 13 and up. And in Card Bard, you are a musician in a lucid, whimsical fantasy tavern attempting to gain fame. Go ahead and choose your musician, choose your songs, and begin composing. Some songs are longer or less long than others, and they'll score you different amounts of fame, which you'll then go ahead and place into your catalog to score you those points. When you hit 15 fame before anybody else, you're gonna win the game and succeed at being the best musician of all time, or uh, at least in the tavern, okay? Let's go ahead and take it out down below. I'll show you what comes in the game, how you can play for two players, and then my review of the game, Card Bard. Welcome to the tavern. And here we have the game Card Bard set up for two players. Each player is going to get their own unique player board, their own unique musician, and their musician's deck, along with an action cube that will start on three to begin the game and it can go up and down. It's also going to give you a player reference on the player board and the unique different areas of the board. The timeline, where you'll be playing your songs. The retiring area, where you'll be getting rid of cards that won't be returning to your deck. The discard pile, which will be shuffled into your deck when your deck runs out. And your catalog, when you complete songs, you'll place your songs down here, and that will score you fame. Fame being these tokens here, and then you'll have some of these unique tokens in the game that will give you fame or cost you fame, depending on what cards are played against the other players. Go ahead and start by looking at the deck and selecting a number of songs. In this case, I would suggest either two or three and put them into your hand. After you've selected the number of songs you want, make sure you shuffle the deck and then deal out cards to each player based on the maximum hand limit. In this case, it's going to be six. Make sure that these cards are hidden from other players so that they don't know what is going to be in your hand. And of course you can draw additional songs. It's very possible that, that would happen. Then go ahead and make sure that these cards are hidden, like I said before, and begin by selecting a player. It can be the player who last played an instrument or was in a band. It doesn't really matter, it's up to you. But go ahead and select one. So we'll go ahead and select Ioline Silverfall here, and she's going to start play. And to start play, it's rather simple. Go ahead and take actions by either drawing cards from the deck here. Oops, I put this face up. Or you can go ahead and play cards in your timeline. The first cards that you can play are going to be song. You have one song in each timeline. And when you play it, it's going to cost you an action. Then, whenever you want to play cards on the song, it's going to be based on the fame requirement here. This is the victory point you can gain through the game, and you need 15 to win. And once you've completed all of the cards on this song here, this will go into your catalog, and you'll score the fame, these points here. So one action. This card here has got its fame level, it's got the type of card it is, as well as the different specific categories, and then it's going to have a unique effect. This one here is a sustain effect, which means while it's in play, you can trigger this ability. And this player's got some more cards in hand, so maybe you'll play something like this one here. This one you play just like that. It says you may take one card from your retired pile and place it into your hand. And if you can't satisfy this effect, then you just don't do it simply. Uh, and it's one card that's going to be considered for this specific requirement of fame. Once we get five more, then this card will score. Then we'll go down here. We've got one more action left. And there are certain cards you can't play, like this one here. This is a finale, and it's an encore card. You have to play it at the very end of a song, and it'll give you some unique benefit. So perhaps I'll just go ahead and play yet again this one here. I'll play this one that goes here. You may take one card from your tired pile. Can't do that. After that, then you're going to go into your discard phase. You can discard any unwanted cards, so probably my finale, probably this one here, another the backfire again. We don't want this one because it's not going to generate us any benefit. And then after that, we'll draw up to our maximum hand size, putting us back to six cards. And then we're going to go ahead and move our action bar here back to its average state, which is going to be three. And then it turns to the next player's turn. And the next player has got their song. So in this case, I'll go ahead and play this one here. Actually, I'll play a smaller one. I'll play this one here. And that's going to cost me an action. I'll check to see what it says. It says when I complete, it'll get something unique for it. And then I can simply go ahead and start playing some other compositions. So I'll play this one here. It says remove a composition card on your timeline. If it is a 
Technic, uh, then you can draw two cards and you'll gain an action. So which, what that means basically is I can play this here first. Maybe you look at your opponent's hand and pick one of the three, uh, one of their cards and discard it. So I can just do something like that. Then I can play something like this one here, which will let me remove this one here after losing an action. And it's going to also let me draw two cards and of course give myself an additional action and continue playing cards and after i've played all of my cards taken all of my actions i'll simply move it back up remember this one only needs four to complete and back to my opponent's turn it keeps going back and forth like that after he of course discards and draws cards back to his maximum hand limit another thing to note too is each of your bards is going to have a unique ability that you can trigger so in this case here you can go ahead and get rid of a card uh, and an action and target player will skip their next draw step and this one over here says for each song in your catalog then your hand limit is increased by one so you'll be able to draw more cards as your hand limit increases a very powerful ability indeed remember cards that get retired go away forever cards that are in your catalog are from finished songs any of these cards here these compose or uh, these composition cards will get put into your discard pile and this will go down here and your timeline is always going to have a song in it if you can help it otherwise you have to continue to draw from your deck using actions and once you hit 15 fame because as you complete these songs you're going to gain these tokens here then you win the game uh, and that's pretty much the idea of the game card bard pretty simple plays up to four players so let's come up and talk about it this game is all about creating songs and gaining fame your objective is to use your deck and your musician as best as possible to construct songs in the most appropriate way for the deck to gain the fame and push yourself to 15 victory points or fame and if you can do that you win the game it'll happen pretty much instantly as you play songs out each of them is going to provide some unique benefits some of them take longer than others which make them more valuable others are shorter and provide some unique sustainabilities that are really quick and to the point each unique unique deck has its own benefit to it one deck is going to focus on drawing cards hand manipulation and getting the songs out as quickly as possible to gain fame and others can can focus on removing or making it more complex to, for another player to play a song as well as the the ability to kind of mess with your opponent and this specific character is also able to place out the cards into their timeline area and uh, get additional cards from the draw pool which is kind of like a passive ability these sustain effects on cards are going to provide you the unique effects whether it be extra actions the ability to discard from your opponent's hand or make more complexity in their song and each unique musician functions differently and they have their own unique abilities and you can utilize those based on the type of songs you choose and the cards in which you place to get that fame and win the game Placing cards on the songs is important. You don't want to simply go and draw as many cards you can from the deck in order to get the best hand to start then placing on the songs. You might have to sacrifice some of the best laid plans in order to keep in the game because you don't want to fall behind in this game. Each action matters and makes a difference. And if you push yourself too thin to get the better hand, then your opponent will skyrocket ahead of you by placing the cards down and completing the songs before you do. And that's the most important. The effects are just supposed to trigger in order to help you gain that unique benefit. The style and design of the cards is very vivid and lucid, as well as it's got this whimsical feel to it. It's going to apply to some people and not to others, I imagine. Personally, I enjoyed the artwork and I feel like that is part of what the intentional theme of the game is. You read the storyline, it has this little in-depth story that talks about being in this tavern and these people trying to play this music and of course gain the fame and it's in this like fantasy world also the unique player boards are nice too it gives you that player reference that you will understand the game and go throughout the different phases and see all the different unique little iconography that you can discern from based on what's on your board and then the difference between discard and retired is very easy to understand what you're supposed to be placing in your timeline and the fact that it functions not really like a deck builder but more of like a deck manipulation game it starts coming into play halfway through what song you choose for your timeline based on the cards you have in your hand and when and how you choose to draw cards is all going to matter in this game a couple little things with the game a i'd like to see equal turns in the game i'd rather it not be just instantly somebody wins when they hit 15 fame i'd rather everybody get equal turns so if one person goes first and it comes back to their turn they simply get 15 points i'd like that second third or fourth player to get an opportunity to have the same number of turns and the same number of actions as every 
player in order to be able to score the same number of points. I think that's only fair. And there's a couple small rules issues that are pretty complex, I guess. It's going to be based on unique individual things. So for instance, a card you might understand that says draw a card and do this unless this. And then you have three other variables you have to factor in. Putting that in the back of the rule book as an FAQ would be nice so that players are going to be a little more understanding of what that specifically does. You can discern it fairly easily, but still I would like to have that there for people who are less knowledgeable in the term of card and board games in the modern world. All right, guys, that's pretty much what I got for you this one here. Um, this is a prototype. It's only up to the two players here. It's going to have more cards. It's going to have more decks. It'll have additional player boards. And of course, this is going to have a prototype feel to it, uh, at least for right now. But when the game is finally done, I'm very interested to see what it's going to look like and what different decks and musicians. I'm sure you can see it on the Kickstarter for yourself. And then you can decide for yourself whether you'd like to pick this game up. Overall, it was a fun experience. I I like building the different songs and I like trying to place them into my timeline and score points and of course crushing my opponent multiple times was also very enjoyable in this one here. So if you like hand management games, tableau management games that also have a little bit of a twist to it as to how you're trying to place them down in order to combine, combo your deck up and learn the different combinations of the cards, this one might be for you. Go ahead and take a look down below, link in the description on Kickstarter. I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say about this game in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. If you're interested in taking a look at this game, like I said before, links down below in the description. You can go ahead and pick it up on Kickstarter. As well as checking out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification button. It does greatly help us out here. As well as taking a look at our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, all kinds of fun stuff that we're doing and updating every week with unique and interesting articles, whether they be thought pieces or simply reviews that cover some of the games we talk about here from a different perspective, or whether we talk about some unique and new games as well as some miniature molds and whatnot. Pretty cool. And you can go ahead and check out our live stream and Discord every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST we have a live stream we play games just like this one down below and if you're interested you can watch us play them and learn more for yourself if it's something that you are going to be interested in and you can also go ahead and check out the discord we have our live auctions that go on every week it's a game that we put up every week starts at a buck and every sunday we're going to end the bidding and we'll send it out to somebody who uh, really wants to make up the game we'll do auctions and flea markets we also do stuff like among us and all kinds of good stuff on the discord all right guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to grant make sure you play music here so i look cool when i do this outro see you guys next time